सर लाइन Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of Department of Neurosurgery, All India Institute of Medical Sciences, I, Deepak Gupta, would like to welcome this August gathering for the release of autobiography of Professor P. N. Chandran, Closed Doors, Open Windows. We have now with us our esteemed chief guest for this occasion, Shri Dr. Harshvardhan Ji, the Honorable Union Minister of Health and Family Welfare, Science and Technology and Arts Sciences. We also have our guest of honor for today evening, Dr. Randeep Guleria, Director AIMS, and of course, the man himself for whom this evening has been organized, Professor P. N. Tandon, a man whose strong personality and charm are matched only by his extreme brilliance and intelligence. His gratitude, his knowledge, his humanity represent a shining example of how one should adjust and live in family, academic and social life. I welcome you all. Good evening all. Alumni meet. As we kickstart off the day, I take this opportunity to invite all of you uh, and welcome you to this event. I also take the opportunity to invite the esteemed dignitaries for the auspicious lamp lighting ceremony. Professor Kale, Head of the Department, Neurosurgery. Emeritus Professor, Neurosurgery, Professor A.K. Banerjee. <coughs> Emeritus Professor, Neurosurgery, Professor P.N. Tandon, sir. Professor Wendy Pelera and the Honorable Chief Guest, Union Minister of Health and Family Welfare, Science and Technology and Earth Sciences. Shivam Karoti Kalyanam, Arogyam Dhan Sampada, Shantra Buddhi Vinashate, Deep Jyoti Namostate, Deep Jyoti Param Brahma, Deep Jyoti Janardhan, Deep Jyoti Hare Tu Papam, Sandhya Deep Namostate. May we all get together for the auspicious lamp lighting ceremony. as we start off the day and accept a small token of gratitude. I request Professor Kale now to felicitate our esteemed chief guest, Sri Harshwardhanji, with a bouquet of flowers.
Now, may I call upon Sister Ranjit, our nursing superintendent, Kalya Neuro Center, to honor Director Ames, Professor Randeep Kuleira. I now call upon Sister Kamlesh, Sister in Charge, ICU, to honor Professor Tandon with a bouquet. She also happens to be the daughter-in-law of Mr. Kumar, who has worked in close association with Professor Tandon for so many years. I now request Sister Rajpala, ANS Neuro OT, to present the bouquet to Professor Banerjee. And now I call upon Sister Paramji, Sister in Charge, Neuro OT, to present the bouquet to Professor Kale, Head of the Department, Neurosurgery. <laughs> Department where ideas are shared, students are enthused, and teaching is dynamic, and I'm proud to be a part of that department under the able leadership of Professor Kale. He has set a record by operating on some of the rare and complex spinal deformities. He's actually the man behind setting up the comprehensive spine care in Ames, Delhi. Besides his academic activities, he also has the task of managing one of the biggest neurosurgery departments in the country. Here. He's inspired us all, always. He's asked us to dream more, to do more to learn more and to become more. So, we are all grateful to you. And now I request on you to please come and welcome the August gathering. Good evening, uh, everybody. Honorable Sri Harshwadhan Ji, Professor Guleria, Director Ames, Professor P. N. The Guru of Gurus, I can say so, grand, Grandfather Guru. Professor A.K. Banerjee, Professor S.K. Pandya, one of the editors of this book, uh, the deans of uh, Ames, Professor Bell, Professor Chitra Sarkar, Professor Dutta Gupta, all my seniors in neurosurgery and the Ames family, um, Professor Talwar, Professor Vedu Gopal, I can see so many. I, this list, I can go on and on and on and there will be no end to it. All my seniors and colleagues in the Department of Neurosurgery, the alumni of Neurosurgery Department, the fellows, the residents of the Neurosurgery Department, the other departments in the Cardio Neuro Center, all my colleagues in the faculty names, ladies and gentlemen. I welcome you all to this uh, unique um, ceremony of the launch of an autobiography. I am honest to say that this is the first time I've ever seen any autobiography being launched. So it's, it's new to me. Um, I read a quotation somewhere which says that uh, it was for a musician that the albums a musician produces, the albums serve as paragraphs in an artist's autobiography. <laughs> So the autobiography I have read for Professor P. N. Tandon, I can paraphrase the above uh, uh, quotation to say, his articles in the various journals, his monographs, they serve as a paragraph in his autobiography, which I have read till now. So, starting sir, from the first article which I could gather from the book, uh, Pulmonary Tuberculosis, Treated by Thoracoplasty, published way back in 1955, that is a decade before I was born, or at least eight years before I was born, to the first international publication, The Diagnosis and Surgical Treatment of Severe Head Injury, published in the Hospital Journal in Oslo in 1960. Again, this was a few years before I was born. To my interest with biomedical research published as late as 2015. These are my paragraphs which I read about his autobiography. 
But, but the real story, I think, he has penned it down. We know him as a tireless worker, tireless author, tireless reader. I am waiting to read that book in detail, to turn every page of it. In the end, I would just like to say one, one beautiful Sanskrit shlok, uh, which says, which goes like this, Adnyanam timirandhasya jnananjana shalakaya Adnyan is ignorance, timir is darkness, andhasya is blindness. So the blindness brought about by the darkness of ignorance, Nyananjan Shalakya. In the eyes which are blinded by the darkness of ignorance, who can put the kajal of knowledge and get them to see Tasmai Shri Guru Venama? Thank you very much. And welcome to our Thank you, sir. Professor Deepak Gupta, the editor of the book, had an opportunity to work in close alliance with Professor Tandon and he had some amazing experiences. I now take this opportunity to invite Dr. Deepa Gupta to share his experiences with us. Well, uh, to sum up, uh, I'd like to talk about uh, Professor P. N. Tandon. To introduce him in five minutes is an extremely impossible task. But, uh, however, I will try to justify. Uh, Professor Prakash Narayan Chandan is a distinguished Indian neuroscientist and a neurosurgeon par excellence. He was born on August 13, 1928, a day yesterday. And yes, he happens to be Leo. For those of you who believe in zodiacs, Leos are governed by Sun and Uranus. And these are the people who work very hard. They are always there when anyone is in need and they seek for perfection. I am sure most of you will agree that Professor P. N. Tandon aptly justifies his sun sign by his actions. Interestingly, when I was doing the Wikipedia search, I came across only two people of his stature who were born on this day. A gentleman was born in 19th century was on the left, you see, Alfred Hitchcock, same day. And then a century later, Professor P. N. Tandon. That shows such people are born one in a century. Well, we always say behind every successful man there is a woman. Yes, uh, Madam, uh, Mrs. Leela Tandon, she is behind him, with him, for him, forever. You can see Dr. Nikhil Tandon and uh, Dr. Radhika Tandon and their two grandchildren, uh, Meha and Shreya. Meha happens to be here. He was a brilliant student. I mean, he was a habit gold medalist. You can ask anybody from KGMC what habit medal means like. It's given to the best of the best. He did his MS in 1952 from Lucknow University and went on to do his FRCS England in 1956. Subsequently, he went for his specialty training in Olympal Hospital Oslo for two years and later on he went to the Mecca of Neuroscience, the Montreal Neurological Institute in 1959 and 60. These are his two mentors, uh, so-called Papa Bolo or uh, Dr. Woldrowski, with him he began his initial career uh, in Erwin Hospital and subsequently in Oslo, Professor Christian Christiansen. <coughs> Professor Tandon is very deeply committed to research. His key areas of interest are traumatic brain injury, developmental defects, subarachnoid hemorrhage, and very latest development of interest is on plant neurobiology. He is the co-editor of textbook of neurosurgery and consulting editor for textbook of operative neurosurgery. In fact, this is one book which is read by all the neurosurgeons in this country, the past, the present and the future. It's like a Bible for all of us. He is a founder co-chairman of Inter-Academy Panel of the World Science Academies. He founded three major institutes and the research centers in the country. First, in 1961, he founded the first neurological service that is Alma Mater, King George Medical University, 1961. Later on, in 1965, he founded the Department of Neurosurgery at All India Institute of Medical Sciences, New Delhi. He went on to found the National Brain Research Center, a state-of-the-art center, after his retirement in 1990s at Manisar. And he happens to also be a national research professor. 
Mind you, this uh, selection committee is uh, the, pro the process is very rigorous. I'm sure some of you will be knowing. And uh, the person who appoints is the, the prime minister of the country at the end. He is the president of three major societies: the past president, the Neurological Society of India, National Academy of Science, Allahabad, and Indian Academy of Neurosciences. If you look at the number of awards he has uh, got, I, the list is endless. But the most important one which I could think of was double PCRI award, once in 1980 and once in 1993. And he's probably the only neurosurgeon I know of, I may be corrected if I'm wrong, who has got all the three highest honor of this country. The Padma Shri, the Padma Bhushan and Padma Bhushan. First of all, the Padma Shri he got it when he was just 45 years of age. He is actually a triple doctorate, I would say. He has received Doctor of Science from Banaras Hindu University, from King George Medical University, and recently from Odisha, the Rensho University. He established the Department of Neurosurgery at All India Institute of Medical Sciences, and uh, Professor ben A.K. Banerjee is there with him, who joined him uh, quite early. And then, this is his team of his students, and many of them have come all the way from different parts of the country to uh, meet him and to say hello to him and to wish him good luck. These are the students in 90s. Some of the faces are already here. And of course, most of the students of his, they are actually now leaders. They are the head of the departments in different parts of the country. They have catalyzed the development of series of national faculties all over this uh, country and abroad. Mm -hmm. And these are the younger generation. I am I'm somewhere in the top uh, right side picture. So overall he has trained more than 150 neurosurgeons I would say. Over 50 are his direct students and the next generation continues to be inspired by himself. Mm. And he being an emeritus professor of the department of neurosurgery, he is always there with us. In fact when we separated this craniopagus conjoint twins, I requested him to come and see. He said, okay fine Deepak, let the children recover, infection subside, I will come over. And after three months, when the children were fine, he came all the way and learned about what was done for the children and congratulated the Department of Neurosurgery. Thank you very much, sir. Some of his personal convictions. He has a desire to excel in whatever one does. For him, excellence is not a destination, but a journey. For it too, sir. He also believes that in the world, everything perishes except ideas and ideas. He says, do what you can and what you have and where you are and not wait for ideal conditions to exist. Not having the ability to cultivate a genuine friendship implies a moral defect as per him. And I think it's so true. We have uh, Professor A.K. Banerjee sitting with him. I don't think they compete with each other. They actually complement each other. They know each other for almost six years. He believes that it is better to have critics around you than to have psychophants. He believes that to gather knowledge, to advance knowledge and utilize it for the common good. He also believes that one should always remain a student, a researcher, a compulsive teacher and an unselfish professional. Last year on 14th of August at National Brain Research Center, when he was there, he summed up his talk with one statement. If you want to get something, you will get it much earlier than me. I think it was too humble, humble for you to say that, sir, but we go by your words. That's Professor P. N. Tundan having a look at all the past directors of All India Institute of Medical Sciences uh, just a few weeks back, and also having a close look at our chief guest, uh, Dr. Harshwardhanji. He's an ardent writer. In fact, if you look at the publications coming up in the National and the International Journal, till today, he's still writing. And these are some of his articles published in the last six months. He has written over 250 plus publications in very high impact national and international journals, research articles, books, monographs to his credit. He is a national research professor and neuroscientist par excellence from India, who after repeatedly finding a door closed, found a more rewarding path through an open window. Well, I, I can just sum up my talk with this Guru Brahma, Guru Vishnu, Guru Devo Mahishwaraya, Guru Sakshar Kar Brahma, Tasmay Shri Guru Benamai. Thank you. Thank you, sir. As a junior faculty, we dream to be Professor Tandon. 
Now may I call upon Professor Deepa Gupta to introduce Professor Guleira, Director Ames, Delhi. Thank you, Shweta. Uh, Dr. Randeep Kuleria is uh, Director, Alinea Institute of Medical Sciences and is our guest of honor for this evening. He has done pioneering work in respiratory medicine. <laughs> the Department of Pulmonary Medicine and Sleep Disorder has been created under his dynamic leadership and has been ranked as the best department in pulmonary medicine by the Nielsen Survey. He has been invited as an expert in several national and international forums including the CDC uh, USA to their Influenza Division study tour. He has been actively participating in various environmental causes and has been an expert at various environmental forums concerning air pollution. I request you, sir, to please share a few words about you, your experience with Professor P. M. Thank Good evening, Dr. Narshwarjan, Honorable Union Minister for Health and Family Welfare, Science and Technology in Earth Sciences. Professor P. N. Tandon, Professor A. K. Banerjee, Professor S. K. Pandev, Professor Kale, Professor Deepak Gupta, Mrs. Leela Tandon, Nikhil and Radhika, dignitaries of the dais, and I see so many of senior dignitaries that I don't think I have time to really acknowledge them all. But it's really a pleasure to see you back in Ames as far as the Ames family is concerned, and other dignitaries who have come from different science departments to honor Professor P. N. Tandon. Ladies and gentlemen, today we are all gathered here to really celebrate and admire the journey that Professor P. N. Tandon has taken over a lifetime and that is through his autobiography. In many ways Professor Tandon has been a teacher of teachers and in the area of neurology, neurosciences he has been an icon. For us at Ames, he's always been a person who we, as has been mentioned, aspire to be and admire tremendously for the achievement that he's done not only in neurology itself, but in the field of science uh, overall. <coughs> Professor Tandon joined Ames in 1965 along with Dr. Baldev Singh and they started the Department of Neurology, Neurosciences and Neurosurgery. And that has been the foundation of what this the Neurosciences Center is today. And what the center is today is basically because of the hard work that Professor Tandon put in during those years when Ames was in its formative years. And I think that is what really is this the autobiography is all about. The journey that he went through and that we need to learn from if we need to really build on this institute and make it what it has become today. He has actually not only involved, been involved at, at AIMS itself, but has really developed the field of neurology and neurosciences for the country, whether it be through his subsequent assignments or the work that has been done. And therefore, the journey that he has taken and that he's written about in his autobiography is something which would be a treat for not only people who are linked to neurology or to medicine, but for people in general as to how one can reach the stature that he has reached in life, the, the, the trials, the tribulations, and the work that one has to do. We at AIM, sir, have always admired your uh, work that you have done, and we, you've been one of our sort of beacons of how we need to move ahead as far as the All Institute of Medical Science is concerned. We've always been grateful that you, have, you keep coming to AIMS and really guiding us, and we look forward for that guidance even in the future. And I would take this opportunity to really congratulate you. It's something which you really put a lot of hard work in the autobiography. We really need to develop such sort of, uh, I would say, precious books to look at the history of AIDS. And I, yes, I know you've been saying that. I've discussed this with you many times. And I think we need to develop an autobiography of AIDS uh, also. Because that is something that will help to So thank you again once, once more, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. And now I would like to call upon Professor Pandya 
the co-editor of the book along with Professor Deepak. We have seen a beautiful amalgamation of science and literature in this book. Let us hear, I call upon Professor Deepak Gupta first to introduce Professor Pandya to the gathering. Uh, Professor Sunil Pandya is a consultant neurosurgeon at Jaslok Hospital and Research Center, Mumbai. Earlier, he served as Professor of Neurosurgery at State GS Medical College and KEM Hospital, Mumbai. Dr. S.K. Pandya, an expert in his own right, not only in the department that he had it so admirably, but also in his flair for writing and editing. I request you, sir, to please share a few words about your experience with Professor P. N. Tandon and, of course, about his autobiography. Please. Thank you. This has been a much awaited day. We have long looked forward to the publication of this book. Dr. Tandon, to his credit, has been working over it for the past 10 years. At times he was in some doubt as to the value of such a, an account. But I think he was gently persuaded by Dr. Banerjee and by others. And so he has finally been able to see the fruition of 10 years of labor. I think much of the credit for the actual publication of the book goes to Dr. Deepak Gupta. A couple of years ago, we were in great doubt as to whether this book will be published at all. And then Dr. Deepak Gupta took it upon himself to make sure that it would be published. And so here we are today. Thank you, Dr. Gupta. Thank you, sir. Now I may call upon Professor Deepak Gupta to introduce Professor Banerjee, our guiding light over here. Professor A.K. Banerjee is one of his oldest, longest, closest colleague come friend since last six decades, I would say. Dr. P. N. Tandon had been his anatomy demonstrator in 1952 while uh, Madam Mrs. Leela Tandon was his lecturer in obstetrics and gynecology at uh, Medical College, Lucknow. Dr. Tandon was instrumental in making him join Ames, Delhi in 1965, when he came to Delhi from Bellor for UPSC interview. He was chief of Neurosciences Center between 1988 and 1995. It is during his tenure when proposals were sent to the government for making the center the best equipped, not only in India, but in the Asian region. I request you, sir, to please share a few words about your neurobiochemistry with Professor P. M. Chandra. I first had decided to speak from there and all my colleagues were trying to persuade me to do so because I have some health problems. But I thought this is one of the occasions when I must stand and pay tribute to the very, very time. As far as a leader is concerned, I have always thought that a leader should have two attributes, very important attributes. One can uh, name large number of them. One is who will be able to persuade one's own self for perfection and excellence. The second is to be able to produce leaders with independent thinking, not clones, but people who develop independent thinking. If you think of these two attributes, Professor P. N. Tandon has ably, very ably, I should say, fulfilled them. Very few in life 
are able to do so. I have had an inside view of seeing his development. And I have seen his urge to develop perfection to such an extent that I can't tell you. I'll give you a very small example. When he joined the science stream, first I think in, apart from neurosciences, general sciences, I think as secretary of INSA and then he presided over it. I am sure these were fields which were not seen, barely known to him. <coughs> Hydrology, geology, pure mathematics, uh, various types of biochemistry, genetics, and you name it. Painfully, he went through everything that he got. And he mastered each one of them enough. When I am told by my friends, when they would uh, meet him in interviews or uh, for grants in particular, the certain questions which he would put would sometimes put the other specialists in that branch to quite a little bit of surprise and if not shame. That here is a man from the world of medicine who is talking of <coughs> all of these things which were actually their domain. When he entered the field of biology, biomedicine, then I have seen his zeal. And I remember one thing which there are some people here who remember, uh, talking about this rotavirus, talking of vaccination. Now, these are things which are not very sort of charming to any neurosurgeon. And look, he studied them, he mastered them enough to act <clears throat> as a leader who could propel others to develop and reach heights which many of them have reached. I think uh, as far as I was concerned, I was uh, blessed by I don't know whom uh, that I had this opportunity to work with him. He had been a very fine boss. He allowed me to do anything I wanted. Matter of fact, in later years, he just gave up the department and he said, you run it the way that you want to. Very few people go. Very, very few people. You uh, turn your mind and look back and you are unlikely to see such a person. And of course, this used to give an enormous responsibility on me to try to live up to his expectation. So that way I think this is exactly how leaders are made. And he has just entered his 92nd year. So I uh, pray to God that he hits a century and more and go on giving his blessings to all of us. Thank you. Thank you, sir. And we are really blessed to have both of you to lead the Department of Neurosurgery here still. Now is the time to hear from Professor Tandon himself and to introduce his experiences and the journey of writing the autobiography. I call upon Professor Deepak Gupta, editor of the book, to share again the experiences. I'm just inviting you on the stage, sir. So now for the most important part of the evening, I would say, I call upon Professor uh, uh, B. N. Tandon to address us with his thoughts, his inspiration, and his journey of writing this absolute gem. So please come. Dr. Harsh Gordon, me. Dr. Galeria, Director of All India Institute. Dr. Kale of Vanity Paper, 
I don't think I have seen such a gathering in this room over the years that I have worked here. And this is too touching for me to be coherent. So pardon me if I get astray. I seldom talk and with anything written in front of me. But realizing that I may face such a situation, I have put down a few notes in front of me. But first of all, I must thank Dr. Harshwan. I know how busy he is. It took me 10 days to see him. But still, when he saw us, he was his usual relaxed side. You know, he was introduced uh, Minister for Health and Family Welfare, and also Minister for Science, Technology, and Earth Sciences. In this country, in the earlier years, the Ministry of Science and Technology was always held by the Prime Minister of the country. And that he has, not only that, but help tells us where he is going to go. <laughs> While I thank him, I must congratulate him today. Because it is a historic day. It is, I am not that egoistic to think that this function is historic. The historic day is because Chandrayaan has left the Earth orbit and is on way. <laughs> and I take that example, pardon me, Mr. Director, to say that we hope that All India Institute will leave the national orbit and so high to welcome. I say this not just for you, Mr. Director, or the Institute, or to Dr. Kale, who heads my erstwhile department, but to each one of you, irrespective of what discipline you belong to, and what you are working for. The country needs it, expects it, and is hopeful that you will succeed. I must confess that I had no desire to write this autobiography. Several friends, including Dr. Sunil Pandya, were after my life. And then at one weak moment of my life, I gave him my words. I have a lot of respect for him. Mr. Director, you just mentioned about the autobiography of this institute. If you could persuade Dr. Pandya to take, uh, Pandya to take this task. I'm just reading his last book that's about the education, medical education in Western India based on the creation of Grant Medical College in JJ Hospital. I have yet to read a historical book with the details that there exist, historical details, unbelievable. And once again, Sunil happened to make me feel humble to put out a, a book that is in front of you today. So I'm sure Sunil will uh, forgive me for this. I'm reminded of uh, I said so many good words when you speak, uh, when I hear them. I'm reminded of a bishop who was being praised 
during his introduction. And when the time came for him, he stood up and said, Ladies and gentlemen, I have two prayers today. One for the person who has talked, who has talked so many lies, and other for myself who enjoyed. <laughs> well, <coughs> one of my mentors, famous <coughs> Dr. Wilder Penfield, the title of his autobiography is a lesson for anybody who works in the complex intellectual field, irrespective of what that field is. The title was, No Man Alone. And I think all that you have said about me was not done by me alone. This was done by a team. And often from this platform and many others I have said that the one thing I had in my life which I treasure most was my dream team. If I was asked to write a dream team, I couldn't have written a better one. And I'm so fortunate that some of them are present here. Well, uh, the, uh, I'm very fond of reading, as you would have known by now. And this makes me write uh, poetry. But I'm deeply <coughs> conscious of a very old statement of Thomas Carlyle, 1795 to 1881, who said, a well-written life is almost as rare as a well spent. Well, I must confess with all humility that I spent a wonderful life. I couldn't have asked for anything better. And what I got was far, far beyond my imagination at any time. And this gathering is another proof of it. So if I deserve the credit for what has been said, then practically each one present in this hall deserves that credit. Because in some way or other, directly or indirectly, small amount or large amount, they have helped me formulate my vision, helped me in executing and following my mission. And therefore, I may humbly submit that they deserve as much credit as I do. As you will have noticed, probably who have seen the book, I must publicly acknowledge that there are so many people that I have to thank that we will be sitting here till tomorrow morning when this will be finished. But I'll take this opportunity to thank my wife. <laughs> he sacrificed the career. For me to be what I there are many, many others. But that's a very rare example. We have already heard my relationship with Dr. Banerjee. With all my colleagues in the department, most of my students at my age, when I have nothing to give, nothing to offer, some of them have come all the way from Bangalore and Bombay and Qatar and Lucknow and what not. I don't think there are many who can be more proud than me to have such an opportunity. Well, uh, Benjamin Franklin provided a gold standard for writing a 
autobiography. And he said, either write something worth reading or do something worth writing. I do not know where I qualify. I leave it to you to judge at your leisure moment. But I would be satisfied whether I qualify these criteria or not. I would be satisfied if this autobiography is able to inspire young people, my young colleagues, to believe whatever man imagines he can bring to pass. You know when it was written? Fifty years ago, in 1969, when the first man landed on the moon, India is progressing in that direction. Though somewhat late, but I'm perfectly confident we will do it. And I'm equally confident that each one of you present in this hall will excel in his or her tasks or responsibilities. Well, uh, I think this is too emotional a moment for me to continue. And I thank you all for taking the trouble to be here and encourage me. Thank you. Thank you, sir. We are all inspired by you today and every day. And now, in honor of Dr. Harshwardhan, our Honorable Chief Guest, I request Professor Deepa Gupta to speak few words. Honorable Dr. Harshwardhan, uh, he is Union Minister for Health and Family Welfare, Science and Technology, Art Sciences. He has a long and distinguished record of public service, an ENT surgeon by profession to start with. Dr. Harshwardhan branched out into public life in 1993. He was instrumental early in his public life through his mass countrywide campaign in wiping out polio from the face of India. Today, polio stands eradicated in India. A tale of two drops, Kahani Do Boon Ki, details the inspiring story of the visionary campaign to get rid of India of polio, which was visualized and held by Dr. Harshwardhan. So thank you very much. Dr. Harshwardhan is not just a man of the masses, he is a man of mass movements. His dedication, drive and energy ensure that anything he handles turns into gold. He has done sterling work in the areas of health, education, environment and science and technology. And his ministerial record in handling these portfolios both at the center and in Delhi is there for all of us to see. Disarmingly simple in personal life and transparent, Dr. Harshwardhan derives his credo from the Rashtriya Swamseva Sang RSS and his inspiration from integral humanism of Pandit Shri Dindyaji. His services are dedicated to the poor and the marginalized and for him, the saver always comes before swim. Nationalism runs in his blood and one can always trust him to come up with a big idea. His indefatigable energy is now focused on launching a similar mass campaign to protect and preserve the environment. Very recently, he brought in National Medical Commission, NMC bill, replacing the age-old MCI with a new body. And this is considered a huge and visionary reform in medical education and health system. <coughs> Fondly called Dr. Sahib, Dr. Harshwardhan is known for his disarmingly simplicity in personal life and transparency at the workplace. I now request our Chief Guest, Dr. Shri Harshwardhan Ji, to please address us. Respected Prof. 
प्रोफेसर बी एन टंडन जी रिस्पेक्टेड प्रोफेसर ए के बनर्जी जी डियर डॉक्टर गुलेरिया द डायरेक्टर ऑफ एम्स डियर डॉक्टर काले प्रोफेसर दीपक गुप्ता एंड प्रोफेसर सुनील पांड्या रिस्पेक्टेड मिसेस लीला टंडन फैमिली मेंबर्स ऑफ प्रोफेसर पी एन टंडन डॉक्टर निखिल एंड डॉक्टर राधिका एंड इनफैक्ट आई वॉज जस्ट राइटिंग आई आई कैन आई नोट वॉट प्रोफेसर पी एन टंडन सेट आई हैव नॉट बीन टू मैनी फंक्शन इन एम्स बट I recall the last function that I attended in this auditorium in a big way was in 2014, and I came for the convocation with uh, our revered Prime Minister Shri Narendra Modi ji, and uh, the likes of uh, Professor P N Tandon and Dr V N Gopal and many others. I think they got their uh, lifetime achievement award uh, by our honourable Prime Minister. that time also i saw a lot of uh, senior people in the audience uh, but i was just uh, well i just said hello to a few of them and then while i was on the stage i was just writing and i thought i must at least uh, symbolically at least name a few because uh, I have attended so many functions in my public life in last 25 26 years at the national level all over the country and at international forums also in maybe at least 40 countries all over the world but I don't think I have ever uh, uh, thought means I think this is probably for me one of the most privileged uh, function and nothing uh, could have been a better opportunity for me than to be part of this function to pay my tributes to one of the greatest doctors of all times one of the greatest uh, genius and a very very sincere down to earth personality whom i have he has never been my teacher but i have always uh, had lot of reverence for him because uh, you know his extraordinary abilities and qualities i'll describe that later on but i wish to acknowledge and pay my respects uh, to the presence of uh, very senior people here doctors sne bhargava dr vinu gopal dr js guleria dr cp talwar dr nandi i have my secretary of uh, former secretary of biotechnology dr manju sharma here the present secretary dr renu swoop is also here dr madan mohan डॉक्टर एस एम मेहता डॉक्टर वी के पॉल डॉक्टर मिसिस पॉल डॉक्टर अशोक चौहान रिप्रजेंटिंग अमेठी द फॉर्मर वी सी ऑफ जे एन यू आई कुड सी डॉक्टर आशीष दत्ता ऑल्सो डॉक्टर ब्रह्मचारी डॉक्टर दास डॉक्टर के के तलवार डॉक्टर एच एन अग्रवाल फ्रॉम गंगाराम Dr. Professor N K Mehra, I had the privilege to work with him in uh, 2014. Also, Dr. Ravi Bhatia, Dr. Gauri Devi, Dr. Vijay Lakshmi, Dr. Mrs. Sada Das, Dr. Selva Murthy, Dr. Mrs. Saroj, Dr. Katoj, Dr. Rakesh Tandon, and uh, there are many others. Uh, please uh, forgive me because everybody who is sitting in this audience uh, large majority of them are 
not individuals, they are, uh, by now they are institutions in themselves. And we have so many past presidents of inside, a uh, lot of uh, great uh, scientists, doctors, researchers, uh, students, media friends, everybody is there. So it's, it's a unique function and that's why that to be paying uh, tributes to the great life of Professor P. N. Tandon through this function in the presence of uh, another great neurosurgeon of the country, Professor A. K. Banerjee. I had the privilege of uh, having a bit of a close association with both of them due to some reasons or the other over the last couple of decades. And it's really beyond my vocabularies and linguistic abilities to really express and define my happiness and satisfaction at this uh, particular moment. I remember when I was a medical student in GSV Medical College Kanpur in the 70s. I don't know whether Professor Priyan Tantan will remember that or not, but my favorite teacher who taught me ENT surgery, an ENT surgeon of great international repute, was Professor D.S. Sardana, who was a dear friend of Professor P. N. Tendon. I asked him just now, he said he was, he was just one year senior to him, but uh, they were great friends. And Professor D. S. Sardana used to talk a lot about uh, Professor P. N. Tendon also, and many of his other friends uh, from KGMC. And I remember that uh, somewhere towards the uh, later part of the 70s or the early part of 80s, the Indian Medical Association Kanpur had organized a lecture by Professor P. N. Tandon about head injuries. And uh, I don't uh, remember that during my uh, about a decade's stay in Kanpur, there was ever a hype around any academic uh, lecture uh, then the hype that was created around the lecture of Professor P. N. Tandon. I was privileged to have attended that uh, lecture and in the lecture itself, Professor P. S. Sadana had also gone to attend that lecture. And uh, all those things that we learned in that lecture, I think there are still a lot of things are still... Uh, 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 I can remember uh, with uh, distinct, I think, uh, identity. So, uh, I have very fond memories of that lecture. And then, uh, recently, uh, last four and a half years, I had the privilege to see him from very <coughs> close quarters, uh, working for science. That's why you see the presence of so many scientists here, so many uh, former secretaries of the Science and Technology and uh, Biotechnology Ministry. It was really dis difficult to describe the man, Dr. P. N. Tandon. The sincerity, the commitment, the dedication, the meticulous approach, the vision. And I think whatever he does, he puts his uh, heart and soul into everything. And uh, in spite of having uh, achieved uh, so many heights, he still remains uh, grounded. Since I had to come here, and uh, I know all of you know far more about him than me. And I am sure that uh, most of you have not read this book. Why now? Because you may not have got the access to this book. But when I was invited for coming to this function, I said, 
unless you give me the book before the release. I cannot come to this function because I also need something to share with the people about you. And this is a function of uh, professional people. So I try to read the book as much as possible. And I can tell you that it is a fantastic book. If you start reading, you enjoy it so much. And especially those uh, in All India Institute of Medical Sciences or those who have, a, uh, <coughs> have an association of uh, their own history with this institution. And more particularly the people who belong to the faculty of uh, neurosciences and neurosurgery and the uh, neurosciences center and all, they will find in every line something or some uh, and of course the scientific community also, the Insta people, they have so much in the book, really uh, feel resonating with everything that is written in this. So for the sake of uh, record and also for you, I will uh, use this occasion to read some of the excerpts from the book in which I found that these incidents and these uh, stories, they depict a lot about the personality and character of, they are not merely incidents that have been described in the book, although uh, there is, a, it starts uh, with the family goes to the school days and then his uh, journey to Ilabad, to KGMC, to Irvin Hospital in Delhi, then the Silver Jubilee TV Hospital, then of course to London, Oslo, Montreal, and then again back in India, then again back to his alma mater in Lucknow, and then almost 25 years in Ames, and the uh, describes in detail the Neurosciences uh, Center at Ames. He has specifically described the decade of 80s with a lot of uh, passion. And then, of course, the, he has a chapter called the approaching, approaching Transition. And then the second career of his life after his retirement, where he is uh, talking about his uh, service to science. And this is one area which I have closely observed over the last four or five years. And then when the uh, greatest uh, neurosurgeon at Ames is under the knife of a neurosurgeon, again his uh, students at Ames. And then finally there is a small chapter which is an epilogue. Uh, uh, I would uh, start with the, the First chapter, in fact, this is a, uh, this is very, uh, these first four pages are written very well by Dr. Pandya and uh, a couple of lines from this uh, describes uh, very well the man and the book itself. And this is a, some sort of a synopsis of the book. The book, this book deals with the life of a pioneer neurosurgeon whose unconventional single-minded pursuit led to the establishment of internationally recognized centers of excellence at a time when few such existed in the country. The trials and tribulations faced by him during efforts to innovate and develop institutions and the manner in which they were overcome provide a stimulating example for those who dream of achieving excellence and contributing to the creation and development of trend-setting institutions despite the prevailing socio-economic political milieu. Undeterred by unexpected pitfalls, gratefully accepting open windows when the path was blocked by closed doors, the author has done his best to achieve his goals. 
अनकेयरिंग अबाउट पोजिशन पावर और पेल्फ He followed his clear vision of his ultimate goal, the creation of institutions that would enhance medicine in the driving force during his unusual career. This led him to attain undreamt of heights that few have achieved. In this pursuit, his uncanny behavioral trait inspired other members of his team to incorporate his dream into their own. thus he contributed the establishment of the to the establishment of the department of neurosurgery at his alma mater at lucknow the neurosciences center at aims new delhi and the national brain research center at manisar each acquiring the status of a center of excellence and international recognition their these memoirs are invaluable in inspiring our youth when aspiring neurosurgeons read of earlier operations being performed on trolleys in hospital corridors in madras and bombay they gain an insight into their own blessings in the form of operation theaters with laminar flow air conditioning and a host of other features that make surgery safer for patients today many others have confirmed my own observation on the meticulous manner in which he studies all relevant documents before attending any meeting and the well focused and apt comments and recommendations he makes as a consequence and then another uh, two three lines from the uh, synopsis of the book when he did start work on this book he took to heart edward gibbons advice truth naked unblushing truth the first virtue of all serious history must be the sole recommendation of this personal narrative then uh, i have to read a, a few lines when he was in class 9 and what he was doing then we many in the all india institute may not be knowing that this is in class 9 there are many things which i can enumerate but i thought a couple of them are essential to be placed on record in this function as soon as the curfew was lifted many of us even with this is uh, he is writing about his uh, student colleagues and he himself as soon as the curfew was lifted many of us even without any prompting or leadership from groups organized prabhat feris early morning processions chanting patriotic songs and daytime marches through main thoroughfares somehow we felt that we should boycott everything that was british including our schools which were based on the english system of education we organized gatherings of students from all neighboring schools which some of us addressed in true patriotic fervor we secretly bought books banned by the british like those by vinayak damodar veer savarkar gopal krishna gokhale and others anti british sentiments prevailed we continued to boycott the school bhani and i along with a handful of others were the last to resume our classes then uh, not many may know that uh, even when he had got selected into the kgmc medical college his father uh, got him admitted to a bsc course <laughs> and he insisted that your admission should be there and he, he had deposited the fees also but why while everyone was happy to learn about my success my father was unrelenting about securing my admission to bsc only later did i learn that he was worried about my being rejected on grounds of my health at that time i was 5 feet 2 inches in height weight 72 pounds and wore glasses minus 6 diopters for myopia the worst fear was 
about my myopia. So the fee was deposited and I was duly enrolled for the BSc Botany, Zoology and Chemistry degree. I thanked my stars when the medical board conducted by the senior professors at KGMC declared me fit for admission to the college. Then, even at the age of 90, how he recalls his uh, friends in the hostel and how much he values uh, friendship. These four lines will give you a feel of that. He had three uh, very close friends according to the book. Swami Saran Bajan, Dheeraj C. Bhora and Mahendra P. N. Pandey. And he says about them, We are like a family sharing all our fears, joys and the usual trials and tribulations associated with medical education. Yes. The binding force of all this was Bengali. As I re write this, it is very heartbreaking to say that all three are no more. This is a unique story of friendship one could write a volume about. But for this account, I will not dwell on it any further than to say that I have always believed that one who cannot have good friends has a moral defect. And just now he was telling me that uh, he and uh, Dr. Benerji, they still meet every Sunday. And I was just, when, I, when he told me that I was reminded of only two, uh, one is our Atalji and Advaniji's Jodi. In today's era, Jodi of uh, Narendra Modi ji and Amit Shah. And here you can see another Jodi of uh, uh, Dr. P.M. Pantan and uh, Dr. A.K. Benerji. I have been fortunate in having sincere friends all my life. I am still in contact, contact with some of them from early school days and several who became friends later in life. I greatly depended on them and they were a source of great strength. Then uh, this is a, uh, another uh, very, you see normally when you achieve great heights and uh, you have achieved so much, you have done so much you have uh, so much to show to the world, then uh, it is very rare that uh, you appreciate what others have also done. But these few lines will show you what is his feeling about what the people in Orient Institute of Medical Sciences have done after he left the scene. And I think this is, his, uh, I think this is a, a great part of his personality. According to the prevalent practice, I was expected to retire at the end of August on reaching the age of 60 years. I was gradually preparing for the same. I applied for the position of INSA, senior scientist position and was selected. Uh, this is another, another aspect of his character, that aspect I will in the next uh, this thing. When moving our offices to the new building of the center, I had insisted on not occupying the office meant for the chief but allotted it to Dr. Banerjee who would succeed me when I retired. He accepted this arrangement very reluctantly under my persuasion. The reasons for me to want to continue in the department as an INSA scientist were my desire to pursue the neural transplant work complete some of the papers for which I had accumulated data and the opportunity it would provide me to retain the house in the campus. Normally people will not write this, normally people will, maybe many of the uh, staff people have these problems, I know. And then he says, since Nikhil was still to complete his MD, then he says, I learnt that just before the meeting, Snay, in consultation with Mrs. Sunita Mukherjee of DDA decided to recommend the extension of my service for two years instead of the requested attachment as an INSA scientist. When I inquired from Sneh the reason for this decision, 
I was informed that the institute's rules specially mentioned that in case of outstanding merit, the age of superannuation could be advanced to 60 years. I felt honored by such a move. I was concerned that this would delay Banerjee from taking over as the head of the department and chief. I therefore told Snehe that I would only accept the extension as professor and give up the administrative position. She was reluctant to accept this and felt that it could lead to some problems for her in future. However, my decision was firm. I was then invited for a meeting by Mr. Dhanua, the Secretary of the Ministry of Health. He told me that the governing body had authorized him to discuss with me and finalize my continued association with the Institute in my current position. I reiterated my condition to him also. After a detailed discussion, he finally came around to my view and I was given extension as a professor for two years. On 1st of September, I formally handed over the charge of the department and chief of the center to AKB, as is written here for you. I continued my full academic and professional activities. For most persons, this was a very unconventional decision. To me, this was the most gratifying one. I think it describes the man quite well. Then just, uh, just I'll just uh, name the I was because there are so many things in this to tell, to share with you. Uh, uh, he is uh, talking about his second career service to science. Uh, he, he has his association with so many places, National Academy of Sciences, National Knowledge Commission, Working Group on Medical Education, Indian Academy of Neurosciences, Indian Council of Medical Research, Expanding Research Activities in Medical Colleges, Medical Council of India, Council of Scientific and Industrial Research, and then University Grants Commission and and MHRD Committee on deemed to be universities, then the Department of Science and Technology, Department of Biotechnology, and of course the Center for <coughs> DNA Printing and Diagnostics in Hyderabad, catalyzing creation of scientific institutions, National Center for Cell Sciences, and then of course is described with a lot of emotions and passions the birth of the National Brain Research Center. And, uh, uh, the declaration of 1990s as the decade of the brain prompted me to write to Professor M.G.K. Menon, the then Minister of Science and Technology, Government of India, on the urgent need to establish a brain research centre to promote basic research and training in neurosciences in the country. On the basis of information generated through these symposia and discussions in the steering committee, a proposal for establishing the Brain Research Center was sent to the Planning Commission by the DBT. Professor C.N.R. Rao, a good friend, was then member of Science in Planning Commission. I must confess that I was greatly disappointed that he turned down the proposals. Then after a, a long uh, description, he says that ultimately he expresses his happiness that after crossing several bureaucratic hurdles, it was during the golden jubilee year of our independence and on the birth anniversary of our first Prime Minister Shri Jawaharlal Nehru on 14th November 1997 that the Department of Biotechnology finally publicly announced the creation of the National Brain Research Centre. Then uh, the greatest uh, neurosurgeon, he is under the neurosurgeon's uh, life, the people who have taught him normally People go to the uh, senior most uh, surgeons when they have to get themselves operated. I know Dr. Vinu Gopal himself got himself operated by Dr. Visoyi who is uh, standing, uh, sitting next to him. And this is a, another very inspiring story which is a chapter, a neurosurgeon and the neurosurgeon's knife. This is his personal experience. He says, I had often thought of spending some time in one of our OTs Watching the present generation performing an operation for a lesion, we would have considered inoperable or at least carrying severe risk. Little did I realize that I will enter one of these theatres 
not as an observer but as a patient. Thus on 18th April 2019, a little over 50 years since I sowed the seeds of neurosurgery, I was wheeled in a state of the art OT for surgery for a pituitary adenoma sized 2.3 into 1.5 into 1.2 centimeters. It, there is a description of the tumor. As per my oft stated claims, if I will ever need surgery on my brain, I would have no hesitation in getting it done by one of the several extremely competent faculty members in my erstwhile department. It was time to prove it I had, and I didn't think twice before handing over myself to one of the younger colleagues to provide me moral support. Three of the former HODs, Professor A.K. Banerjee, Professor Ravi Bhatia and Professor B.S. Mehta accompanied the trolley to the OT. Fully aware that there were several faculty members who could take up this responsibility, the choice fell on Ashish Suri in consultation with Professor Kale, the HOD. <laughs> then, uh, in the last paragraph of this uh, same chapter, he is uh, placing on record his feelings. I must record that the type of care, the multidisciplinary team management, and the repeated and diverse laboratory investigations carried out during this period would not have been possible in our earlier days. But over and above all this, the personal attention and care I received was unquestionably unique. I am sure it could not be available at any cost anywhere else, nor there would be another example of such service rendered to even a VVIP. Obviously, this cannot be described in words, but only felt. My grateful thanks to all those who looked after me and gave me another lease of life. A new window has opened. I don't know why and for what. Then I just uh, uh, mentioned that what he feels about uh, what people have done uh, 30 years after he left this place. So this is a, a chapter 19. There is a small epilogue. It has been nearly three, three decades that I have relinquished my official position at the institute. A long time to look back at the legacy one has left behind. But before I do so, let me hasten to add that my association with the department continues even today. Initially actively for five years as Bhatnagar Fellow, and later as an emeritus professor. However, this association has been purely with its academic activities. I can take no credit for its further evolution. Often before my retirement, fears were expressed by some well-meaning persons about the future of the department. At no stage in my career did I ever have any doubts about its continued progress. Events have not only proved me right, but as the following account will illustrate, the department has attained greater heights beyond my imagination. From the time of my superannuation, the faculty has grown from 6 to 24, the residents from 10 to 40, and the operation theatres from 3 to 10. The number of patients seen in the outpatient has increased from 20,000 to 48,000 per year. The number of operations performed has increased from 1700 to 4600. 650 cases were submitted to Gaman Knife Therapy in 2018. There has been a parallel strengthening of faculty and residents in the supporting departments of Neurology, Neuroanesthesia, Neuroradiology, Neuropathology, Neurochemistry has given the number of the increase. There has been a phenomenal enhancement of facilities such as addition of MRI, gamma knife, PET scan and intraoperative MRI to name a few, neuroendoscopy, skull based surgery and pediatric neurosurgery which were in their infancy in my time have matured to international standards. The establishment of a full-fledged trauma center provides state-of-the-art facilities for the care of neurotrauma victims. 
A comprehensive program has evolved for epilepsy surgery and functional neurosurgery. A unique neurobiology laboratory for basic research on epilepsy, affectionately dedicated to me. The only one of its kind in the country is producing internationally competitive research. Another unique facility is the establishment of the neurosurgery skill training laboratory dedicated to honor Dr. Benerjee who initiated this activity which provides hands-on training for complex surgical procedures that are not easily possible to train during regular surgery sessions. It caters to the need of in-house postgraduate students but also those from the rest of the country and neighboring countries. Edic Academy Training Laboratory in the Trauma Center supplements its activities. The mission to have a comprehensive brain research center with parallel development of both the clinical and basic neurosciences at AIMS could not be achieved in spite of all efforts. It remained a cherished goal even after my superannuation. It thus fell to my good fortune to sow the seeds of three important neurosciences centers, the Department of Neurosurgery at KGMU Lucknow, the Neurosciences Center at Ames, and the National Brain Research Center. Fortunately, all are blossoming today. As described earlier, towards the later years of my professional life, I was progressively driven beyond the limited field of service to neurosciences to the broader field of science in general. At the same time, it must be acknowledged that even if these efforts resulted in some discernible positive results, no single individual can take credit for it. Nevertheless, it is also a fact that over the years I have spent a lot of my time participating in and contributing to a host of such activities totally in an honorary capacity. Then he produces a small poem also here. I am tempted to reproduce a small poem that Professor Baldev Singh often recited to me. I understand Professor Baldev Singh is your mentor. I have heard about him but I don't know much about him. Vah chal chal ke umar, kate chan se teri, vah kaam kar ke yaad, tumhe sab kiya kare, jis manch par dora zikar ho, jis manch par dora zikar ho, rahe zikar khair hi, jo naam tera le, to adab se liya kare. I attempted to give up to this advice passed on to me, by one of our most respected heroes. Then he later on says, Paramahansa Yogananda said, a person is old when he refuses to make the efforts to change. I guess nobody would have found me wanting in these efforts. It won't be wrong to say that it sincerely followed the advice of Dylan Thomas who said, do not go gentle into that good night. Old age should burn and rave at the close of the day. Rage, rage against the dying light. God has been generous to me in making this possible so far. Who knows what about the future? I have been extremely fortunate that my services have been recognized beyond my imagination. I must put on record that these awards and recognitions, some of which were which very few medical men would have received were neither sought nor expected. I did not apply for any nor requested others to nominate me for these. But more than these awards, what was much more valuable to me was the love and appreciation which I received in immeasurable quantity often from unexpected quarters. Consciously or otherwise, I seemed to have adopted the advice of the poet laureate Iqbal. Khudi ko kar buland itna ki takbir se pehle khuda badde se kut puche bata teri raza kya hai. And then uh, in this uh, final paragraph he recalls uh, Nelson Mandela and says, As Nelson Mandela wished, on my last day I want to know that those who remain behind will say, the man who lies cremated here has done his duty for the country and his people. I'll be lucky if I could achieve this wish. Now I hope and pray that God will continue to bless my remaining days to be passed in grace and peace. I wonder 
If as during my whole life when I found a door closed, the exit through the window led me to a better pasture, so when the door finally closes, will I be as lucky? Then I, I am just reading the, the last two three paragraphs. Uh, please bear with me. I, I thank uh, thank you for all your patience. Uh, this is uh, these are the sentiments out of which I have just picked two paragraphs, which he had expressed uh, on the 75th birthday of Professor P. N. Tandon. I understand a function was organized in All India Institute of Medical Sciences in the uh, Department of Neurosurgery. So uh, these two paragraphs are from that uh, uh, so what he had expressed at that moment. Uh, I am greatly touched by the signal honor which you have wished to confer upon me. In the course of my long life, I have received far more recognitions than I deserved. But of all the honors received by me, this expression of your unsolicited love and affection is the most precious. This is all the more so since it comes to me from those who were recipients of my not infrequent chastisement and suffered my slave driving instincts. Many of you would remember that play card prominently displayed in the ward. To forget is a crime. To be lazy is a greater crime. To neglect work and offer excuses is the greatest crime. Action without delay is the soul of efficiency. Any deviation from this law was a cause for unwelcome reprimand. Nothing less than perfection was tolerated, which no doubt was considered unfair or silently resented. And then in the uh, last uh, of this paragraph, uh, of this uh, uh, sentiment expression, he says, uh, he recalls Sir C.V. Raman, and he says, uh, standing here it all seems like a dream. But then I have always been a dreamer. As Sir C. V. Raman said, I think that dreams are the best part of life. The greatest thing in life is not the achievements, but the desire to achieve. No doubt, dreaming is a pure bliss, but to see them come true is sublime. Let me take this occasion to thank all those whose efforts made me see my dreams fulfilled. The Neurosciences Center first, and now the National Brain Research Center. At my age, I can only hope that the journey of a dream doesn't end with the dreamer. Not only do I wish that you carry these dreams forward, but also that you dream higher and achieve. As Walt Disney remarked, if you can dream it, you can do it. Then finally, there are there is a chapter about the personal convictions of uh, Professor P. N. Tandon. I just picked up two out of them. It's a uh, long list of his personal convictions. A desire to excel in whatever one does. It is not what one does in life that matters, but how well one does is important. Of course, I realized very early that excellence is not a destination, but a journey. I. Lord Adrian, Nobel Laureate, a distinguished neuroscientist, pointedly asked not to confuse excellence with perfection and stated, excellence I can reach, for perfection is God's business. And then, and finally, another uh, of his personal convictions, which I think appeal to me, uh, having to work under circumstances of limited facilities and resources, Especially in the earlier years of my career, I adopted the dictum enunciated by Theodore Roosevelt. Do what you can with what you have and where you are and not wait for ideal conditions to exist. So, uh, uh, dear colleagues, in fact, uh, there are hundreds and thousands of things in this book which I really felt that I should have uh, shared with you. But I think this is a, this is a, a brief about the personality of the great uh, doctor. And I once again say that this is uh, for me also, this is a very, very privileged moment. Paying my respects and tributes to 
one of the greatest uh, genius of all times, sitting with another genius, Professor Rick Benerji, in the presence of so many genius uh, of the country. Uh, sir, I am really grateful to you for having given me this privilege. On behalf of all of you and all the countrymen, we pray that both of you so first reach the century mark and then we'll seek an extension. <laughs> Thank you so much, sir. Wish you, wish you and all others be well. Namaskar, Jai Hind, Bharat Mata Ki Jai. Thank you, sir. Such an elaborate, critical review of the book. And now we move towards the most awaited part of the day, the release of the most awaited book. Closed doors, open windows. To pen down his experiences, big and little, his sorrows and joys, his trials and tribulations, for all of us to read and to learn. Only a master can do that, share all his experiences with us. I also call upon Dr. Pandya and Dr. Deepak to join us in this release ceremony. Ladies and gentlemen, Please give a big round of applause for the release of this book. We understand each, of, each one of you would like to share your list of experiences that you have shared with Professor Tandon and are a part of his autobiography. I now request Professor Deepa Gupta to please move around and welcome the crowd to share their experiences with him. Well, uh, we understand that each one of you uh, who has come here would like to share your bit of experiences with Professor P. M. Tandon and his autobiography. However, I have the unpleasant task of time management in view of the looking at the busy schedule of the, our chief guest. So, uh, we have figured out four names only uh, who, can, who can share their thoughts about Dr. P. M. Tandon. First, may I request uh, Professor Sneha Bhargav uh, to say a few words. She is the former Director and Professor Emeritus Ames and she is the former Vice President and Elected Fellow of NASA. Ma'am, you can speak from here. Ma'am, I'll put it here. Good evening, everyone, on the dais and off the dais. If I have to recall my journey with Professor P. N. Tandon, I would say he's my first boyfriend, oldest one. My association goes back before most of you were born, and that is 1954-55. It makes it six and a half decades. After that, we met when he joined the All India Institute of Medical Sciences. Our first meeting was in what was the Irwin Hospital at that time and now converted into the 
Jai Prakash, Mulana Azad Medical College now. After that, we went our ways, he to do neurosurgery and me to do radiology. And our next meeting then was at the All India Institute of Medical Sciences. We spent 25 years together and I, I won't be surprised, I will be surprised if I'm not part of his dream team. I haven't read the book, but I expect that would be so. All, I think there are so many quotations and I would like to end by a quotation which says, you have been as strong as rum, as fine as wine, as cool as beer, as classic as whiskey, and as sophisticated as vodka. I raise my glass to you. Next, uh, may I call upon Dr. Ravi Bhatia. Yes. Dr. Ravi Bhatia started his medical career in AMC in 1961 and is one of the pioneers in the field of stereotactic neurosurgery in India. And uh, he was the head of the department of neurosurgery in 92 to 94 and the department uh, blossomed under him, being, being the best in the Indian subcontinent. Dr. This has been a, an absolutely wonderful occasion. And I'm most grateful to the Department of Neurosurgery for having invited all of us to this meeting. But aside from that, it's amazing that two people who set up this department, Professor Prakash Tandon and Dr. Ajit Banerjee, came together and made such a success of it. And the reason is, we have on one side a strict vegetarian who never smoked or drank. And on the other side, Dr. Ajit Banerjee, with whom I had to share the OPD with stacks of Charminar cigarettes, which was like you get fumigated if you sat very long. And I would, one of the great sh uh, sharabi and kababi <laughs> of, of the And how they got on, I, I don't know. Thank you, thank you very much for a wonderful many decades. Next, uh, may I call upon Professor J.S. Guleria uh, to say a few words, sir, please. Well, I might say a few words. I joined the institute in 1958, when there was no building, only the grass and only the few quarters were there. <clears throat> and actually, we in the beginning only have no peon. We used to clean the floor ourselves. But later on, when Dr. Tandon joined, he joined in 65, he was moving around and we were all waiting that some person has to be taken over for the surgery department. And uh, he actually came to join as a pool officer. And uh, he was thinking to join the pool officer and uh, in the meantime he also got interviewed in the crowd. And he got selected there as chief of the neurosurgery. But now uh, he didn't join, he asked Dr. Vig whether I should join the pool officer or should I join the Lucknow Medical College. But it's good luck of the institute as it happens and we are grateful that that advice stuck to him. Dr. Vig asked him, you better go to Lucknow first, because if you become the chief there, it's much easier for us to take you back to the institute and offer you the job. And this is what happened, and we are lucky that that day he got the proper advice and we had him back in the institute. Uh, next, uh, may I call upon uh, Dr. Mandeep Sharma 
come up with the dais, please. Uh, she is the former secretary of Department of Biotechnology and former president of National Academy of Sciences of India. Respected, beloved, what not, I don't know what to say, Sir Professor Talman, and all the distinguished participants here. I really have no words because I become very emotional when I see such a function. But uh, the most important thing which all of you should know about Professor Talman is being one of the greatest medical uh, expert, the best neurosurgeon probably of the world. He has been a great, great, great scientist. As President Insa, as a President of the National Academy, as an advisor to the Department of Biotechnology, as a so, sort of a Again, an advisor to Bayrag, the recently set up structure, Professor Tendon's contribution to Indian science are immense. And that is what is remarkable about this person, that being such a great neurosurgeon, spent all his life, and we have heard everything about him, in the hospital, he continues to be a great scientist. There is no science department, no science department which has not had advice from Professor Tata. That's the most unique Let me come to my personal this thing. When I was secretary, even before that, in setting up of the National Brain Research Center, and so many, so many, so many projects. Professor Tandon stood behind me supported me, advised me, guided me. A friend, philosopher and guide. It is his journey. Uh, I would say I was all the time behind him to whatever he wanted me to do, to take up new areas, biomedical research must be expanded. Anything he wanted, we tried to do in the government department. So Professor Tandon is somebody who is symbolic of a very unique personality of uh, a scientist, a surgeon, a neurosurgeon, a doctor, and most importantly, one of the best human beings one can have. I would say if uh, uh, someone has to pray to God uh, today, I think they would like to say, that uh, why not we have many more Professor Tandans and if science can clone him and have number of Professor Tandans in this country. I think we will have no dearth of progress, we will succeed in everything in life and in the country. Professor Tandans contribution to in, uh, national progress, to the society, to every human being he has been in touch with are monumental and nobody, no human being can do this the way he has worked for science, for medical uh, research, for clinical work, for everything, everything, everything. One word about Professor Tandon and Professor M.G.K. Menon. Professor Tandon worked very closely with Professor M.G.K. Menon and many of the things which Professor Menon wanted to do and he was not well, sir, Professor Tandon took on the responsibility to do that. That is the great thing and the scientists always remember that he played the role of almost like Professor M.G.K. Menon in many areas of uh, science and technology. So I say, sir, very sadar pranam to you, all my respect for you, and from the entire scientific community I can, I can say here that 
We all love you and respect you. Yes. Next, I call upon uh, Dr. Vijaya Lakshmi. She is the first founder director of National Brain Research Center. Thank you, sir, for inviting me today. So, my first association with Dr. Tandon was when I started my career at Nimhans as a faculty, and I would take projects for getting rewarded, awarded by the DST. And Dr. Tandon was so feared that none of us dare open our mouth. And of course, I didn't get funded the first few years. <laughs> but I think our deep association began when I took up as the founder director of NPRC. And Dr. Tandon was there to advise me and guide me every inch of the way while making sure that he never interfered with the things that we wanted to do, like recruitment of faculty and others. He talks about closed doors, but he actually opened doors for us. As NBRC raised ahead and became a Dean University, became an Apex Coordination Center for Brain Research, and we went on to realize so many dreams that we talked about. I don't know when this association of his being a mentor and me being a mentee transformed into a relationship of a father and daughter. He gathered me into his larger family, made me a part of one, and gave me as much love, so much so that I consider him my second father. So if I don't make those frequent calls from Bangalore, he will call me up and ask me, so have you forgotten your father? But to me, the most touching thing was the day he got discharged after his surgery, very recently, he called me and he said, Mujhe pata hai tum chinta karti hogi. मैंने इसीलिए फोन किया कि तुम ये जान लो कि मैं इस काबिल हो गया हूँ कि मैं फोन कर सकता हूँ अब अपने फोन से and that was the happiest day of my life thank you for your love thank you for everything you have done for us thank you lastly I call upon Dr. Ishan Patro he is the vice chancellor of Ravenshaw University in Odisha which is a 150 year old institution to make a special announcement Respected dignitaries on the dais, of the dais. If I'm standing here, I'm standing just because of the mentorship of Professor Tanner. Anything I've done, I've achieved, it's all because of his guidance, his love, his respect for the work that he does and he let us do. I'm a small soldier of one of his dreams of making neuroscience education happen in this country. As the Vice Chancellor of the Ravensa University, I must say that the Ravensa University, the students, the faculty, and the alumni are very grateful to you, sir, for accepting to be conferred with the degree of DSC Honoris Kaja of the University. His Excellency, the Governor of Ravensa, and the Chancellor of our University, Professor Ganeshi Lalji, on the day of convocation on the 5th of January, where Professor Rekhe Mahapatra, one of our Senate members, was also there, has given me and charged me to hand you over the degree in a meeting of this kind. So I take the privilege today of honoring you on behalf of the university and on behalf of the chancellor of my university, the degree of Doctor of Science Honoris Causa for your outstanding contribution to science, most specifically to neuroscience and neuroscience education of this country. And of course, all the degrees and I join me in handing over the degree to Professor P.M. Tanner. Thank you, sir.
When I requested Dr. Tandon to write something for me, he wrote one line. He said, his son, one of my find. So there are many here who have been made by him. We all owe you everything, sir. We wish you a long, happy, and healthy life. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. What a memorable evening. Filled with anecdotes and blessings. Now we come to the end of this ceremony. I request Professor Deepak Gupta to express his vote of thanks. Thank you all for being a part of this beautiful ceremony. It is indeed an honor to be able to have you all with us on this momentous occasion. Moments like this are rare and special in one's lifetime and we are lucky to be here. I once again want to thank my, our chief guest, Dr. Shri Harshwardhan ji, and our guest of honor, uh, our director, Dr. Randeep Kuleria ji. Special thanks to Professor Tandon for honoring us with his presence today. And also a special thanks to Professor A.K. Banerjee and Professor S.S. Kale, our head of the Department of Neurosurgery. A very special thanks to uh, Madam, uh, Mrs. Leela Tandon ji, who has come all the way uh, today. Uh, she has blessed us with her presence today in this auditorium. Thank you to Dr. Nikhil Tandon and Dr. Radhika Tandon for their feedbacks uh, in the whole conduct of this event. I wish to thank Professor Dr. Sunil Pandya for giving me the opportunity to do this Herculean task. I want to thank uh, all his friends, well-wishers, students, colleagues of Professor P.N. Tandon who have come all the way from different parts of India. Dr. Sneha Bhaga, Dr. B.S. Das, Dr. Ravi Bhatia, Dr. V.S. Mehta, Dr. A.K. Mahapatra, Dr. B.K. Mishra and all his students who have come all the way from different parts of India for such a, at such a short notice. I want to thank Dean Academics, Dean Research, Medical Superintendent Ames, Registrar, Senior Professors and Residents of Department of Neurosurgery and Faculty of Neurosurgery. I want to thank Dr. Pankaj Seth and the entire team of NPRC and the team from INSA who have come here. I also want to thank, uh, there are so many names because everybody sitting here are VVIPs. In fact, uh, we have displayed an email ID. Uh, those of you who want to echo your uh, uh, sentiments about Professor P. N. Tandon, you please email it there. We will ensure that it reaches uh, Professor P. N. Tandon. I also want to thank uh, my staff uh, Dinesh Rahiya and Kaveri Sharma for their secretarial assistance and staff of CMED, Mr. Yogesh. Special thanks to the Walters group, uh, Dr. Vinnie Mathur, uh, Tamali and her team for publishing this book. Thank you so much. And of course the, the entire neurologist community. Yeah. I want to thank, uh, I want to thank uh, Mr. Ankur Bhargav from Jupiter's in arranging logistics related to the book publishing. Mr. Vikram Batra, Mr. Ravinda, Mr. Gupta Ketras, audiovisual staff of JL Auditorium. I'm sure I must have missed out many, 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 many names. Uh, please, uh, please forgive me for the names which are missing. And I just want to thank you all. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. May all rise for the national anthem, please. <laughs> Janakana Mana Adina Yaka Jayade Harata Bhagya Vithada Panchava Sindhu Gujarat Maratha Dravida Bhuttara Vanga Vindya Himachala Yamuna Ganga Uchala Jaladhita Ranga Tava Shubhana for the group photograph over here and there will be book signing after that. I think uh, Professor Nathan has already signed more than 100 books. Uh, so uh, I would request all of you to collect your books outside. And uh, Professor Banerjee desired that the Department of Neurosurgery, Neurology and the entire CN Center come for a group photograph here. So all those who are present from the Neurosciences Center, it's a rare occasion when most of you are present. I would request you to please come up on the dais, including the alumni. 
Да, не мое слово. Сорбиска.